Hi everybody and welcome back to class. Today is Sunday, February 21st. It's Mark and I think we've got a great class for this week. In the beginning of the semester it seemed like we were spending a lot of time reading and doing discussion boards and less time writing and perfecting essays, but that's the part of this class that we're getting to. So I'm excited to see that. For this week we are going to jump into class sessions. And as you'll see, there is less reading for this week because we're going to spend a lot of time polishing our first classical argument essay and working on the audience. So I'm going to open folder for class session seven. Excuse me, I'm having a hard time talking today. And you'll notice in the readings folder, there's only two articles. Not too bad. Of course, you're going to want to go through these completely. This first one from Writing Comments is about the classical argument. And it is about understanding and making and refuting arguments, how to analyze from a rhetorical perspective. And there is a video included in this one, as there usually is. I won't go through this entire thing, but make sure you read it and take notes on it. I believe this is more than one page. Yes, it is. So make sure you hit the next arrow there to ensure that you read the entire thing. The second one, and this one is very important, is about the audience. Because we're going to be discussing for whom are you writing in this particular session. And there are some surprises here. So as we always suggest, make sure that you print these out. Pay particular attention to this one. Isn't my instructor my audience? Well, yes, in a way, but I'm not the sole audience. As you write, and as more importantly, as you revise, you want to consider who are the people that most need to hear what you have to say in your essay. It may not be the people in this class, or even me. And there's some interesting bullet points in here for you to consider. Who is your audience? Might you have more than one, as I just suggested? How many audiences may you have? This is also important. What does your audience need? In other words, what is it that they need to hear, and how can you better craft your essay to appeal to them, considering what is most important and what is least important? So read for the, through this carefully. Make sure you take a lot of notes, highlight things, whatever works best for you. But those are two pretty good articles. And because there's only two, I know you'll give a lot of attention to them. Next, I'm going to open the folder on the revision process. I did say there was not a lot of reading, but the two articles in the readings folder are not the only articles to be read. Here is one from the Writing Center about revising drafts, and here is one from Purdue Al about revising your paper. There's also a short video, it's only 2 minutes and 30 seconds, about a three-step revision process. But I want to open the one from Purdue Al and discuss that. Of course, you're going to read the other ones and or watch the video. And this gives some important tips, finding your main point. And it's not just that your essay has to contain a main point, of course. But as you reread and as you polish your essay, you want to make sure that all of your arguments contained within the paper reflect upon your main point. Identify your readers and your purpose, of course. You're writing for one or more audiences, and you want to make sure that what is contained in your essay is what is going to appeal to them and be the most persuasive to them. The same with evaluating your evidence. Of course, you only want to include evidence that is going to have an appeal to the audience you are writing for. There are other suggestions in here, but I want to give you two suggestions that are not contained in here. And you can take these or leave these, but I think these work best in polishing an essay. And the first is, after you've gone through it and done your evaluation of your evidence and considered your audience, if you can, try and put the essay aside for a day or two. Don't read it. If you start working on it on, say, Monday the 22nd, and you've read through it and you've corrected your typos and your grammars and you think you've strengthened all that you can, if you have the time, lay it aside. And don't pick it up until Wednesday or Thursday. 
when you reread it that second time after you've made some changes you'll be viewing it with fresh eyes and you'll probably see things that might escape you if you continued to reread and reevaluate it the second thing is to give it to someone else give it to someone else who ideally is not related to you so for example not your significant other your husband your wife your parents give it to someone who's completely unrelated to the class and let them read it now they may not be the audience you're writing for but again they will see it with fresh eyes and will be an independent voice that can be critical of it and can tell you that this argument here is fine but it doesn't connect to the main point I suggest doing those two things now of course you don't have to if you don't want to but it has been my experience that those work more often than not and make sure as I suggested to I think everybody in the class as you're revising before you turn it in make sure you're using F7 spell and grammar check it'll catch a lot of mistakes that you may not see remember and I think I've said this before when I open up one of your final essays the first thing I do is hit F7 so if I'm going to do that to begin with when I'm grading your paper you should hit F7 before you turn it in that way it catches all the mistakes before I even see it so two articles in the readings folder two older two articles under the revision process there are a couple of videos contained in the readings folder within the articles and then one video here that you need to watch about the three-step revision process and that's it for reading now let's go on to the assignments the discussion board and in this you're going to evaluate who your audience is remembering that it could be more than one person or more than one group what does your audience need most what do they want what do they value what is important to them also what is less important to them what kind of organization would best help your audience understand what it point it is you're trying to make and how you're trying to reach them and what do you want your audience to think learn or assume 250 words this is just devoted to your essay and because although this is Sunday the 21st we already have one we can look at I think Emmy Duke already put hers in here and so Emmy Joe we're gonna look at yours and I think this one is pretty well done notice she first indicates who her audience is uninformed parents or guardians or people who care for small children and then she also includes a second audience down here anti-vaccine activists and she addresses all of the points for each of these two audiences now I haven't uh, evaluated this one yet so I can't say that Emmy did a perfect job but in my quick read of this which I did before I uh, started recording I thought this one was pretty well done so here's a model that you can follow of course you may do it slightly differently you may say more you may say less but it probably would benefit everyone if they gave this a read before you started to compose your own and if my laptop will navigate there it goes we'll get back to where we were and the final thing that you have to do is submit your final argument when you submit this it's worth 150 points you don't need to include the peer editing sheet on the end of it that was for this past week or should I say the current week where everyone was revising and proofreading and editing and giving feedback on the essays of at least two other students and I know as of today that process is not yet complete it'll be finished by this evening that's fine but I just want the essay itself so after you have considered your audience for whom you are writing and how you should best appeal to them after you've polished it as best you can this coming week hopefully giving it to someone else hopefully having the opportunity to lay it aside and let it rest for a day or two so you're reading it with fresh eyes you're going to turn that in into this assignment link as an attachment 
by Sunday, February 28th. So as I stated, there is less reading this week. There's a little bit of writing in the discussion board, but mostly I want you to con concentrate this week on carefully revising and making that essay that you're going to turn in on the 28th as good as it can possibly be. Can you send it to me in the intervening time for my consideration? Of course. I'll take a look at it for you and let you know if I think you're on the right track or if you're out in left field. You can send it to me at M-S-T-E-N-G-E-R and the number one at ivytech.edu. Or if you simply want to chat, you can text me anytime at 812-498-4200. I think this class is off to a great start. I am glad that we're getting into the real meat of writing this week, and I'm looking forward to reading everyone's essays in about seven days or so. Good luck to everybody. Text me if you need me, and I'll see you around. Bye-bye.